I just want to see more growers confident in dictating their pricing and being able to choose their customers and knowing that they're going to make the money they need to, they're going to cover their costs and maybe even like make some profit on top of that. Um, and at the other steps of the supply chain, we've got to stop again, like this example of this market that was like, your coffee's too expensive. Can you give us a better deal? We have to have more people saying no to that. This episode is proudly brought to you by Mapper Forwards Workshop. It's time to become a coffee consultant. Learn how to diversify your revenue streams and create freedom from your day job while saying goodbye to that alarm clock forever by becoming a consultant within the coffee industry or directly to consumers who have shifted towards home brewing and home roasting. Protect your income from challenging times in the coffee value chain by taking this course today. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode three of a five-part series with Madeline from PCR. Madeline, in this episode of the series where we're talking about the conversations that we should be having in coffee, Um, we're going to be talking about why aren't we paying above the cost of production for coffee? So why aren't we talking about that? Before we answer the question, why aren't we talking about that? Um, I think it's, it's a hard question for people to answer. And again, it's one of those things, it's not a fun conversation. Okay. So we avoid it because it's not fun. It's mm-hmm. not easy. People avoid the hard stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, and I think that it's just a conversation that we don't, we don't, it's not front and center right when somebody starts in the industry, mm-hmm. right? It's not part of the like, this is why you want to be involved or this is what it, what the coffee industry is about. Um yeah, it wasn't even something that I started thinking about until several years into my time in coffee. Um, and do, so I think that's why. Do you think that, um, sorry to have interrupted you there, but do you think that a big reason is also that once people start talking about this stuff, they're accountable to it? Yeah. Well, if you start talking about it, but you're not actually doing yeah. anything. Right. But that's what's happening. That's still what's happening. And I think this is part of the reason why it's just like, I just want to shake everybody. It's like, you've been talking about this for a decade now. And yet, what are you doing? And I want to say something, folks. If you listen carefully enough to this podcast, I leave Easter eggs in a lot of the conversations. And if you don't know what an Easter egg is, is it's like a little present like a little clue of something that you can figure out if you know how to read between the lines Mm -hmm. when I tell stories on this podcast if you listen carefully because I can't say things as openly because I've been entrusted with information but I do give you enough details for a lot of things where you can reverse engineer the full story Because it is important for you as a participant in this industry that if you respect and are inspired by different people, you should know whether they are worthy of you feeling that way about them. And I can tell you unequivocally that there are stories that I have been told about people who own brands that go to producers and ask them for discounts on the coffee. Mm -hmm. And in the next breath are going on social media and saying, we're releasing this and we're releasing that. When they've just gone to a producer and said, we don't have enough money to pay you the price that we paid last year. When the producer's intending on increasing the price in the first place. It's predatory, folks. And you deserve to know the people in the industry that are doing that. Now, I'm not going to tell you who they are, but there are Easter eggs. I just want you to know there are Easter eggs that are left 
in in a lot of these stories that you could figure it out if you squint. I've never said that before, but please know that. Anyway. Well, and like those so those those same brands like you just alluded to. How much money are you spending on this marketing push now? Mm-hmm. For a specific coffee that you just purchased at a discount or you just asked for a discount on. Mm. Ugh. Yeah. So so when we talk about, you know, we've talked about why we're not having the conversation about the cost of production. Now I wanna ask the question, why aren't we as an industry paying above the cost of production? Yeah. So one connected to the colonial roots of this industry once again you know and just mm-hmm. this system that again the few elite have benefited off of who have dictated pricing and held that power to do so and i would say in recent years maybe maybe decades i'm not sure i haven't been in the coffee industry for decades uh with, but there has been this shift in information, where growers have more access to information, where they have access to social media to see what is happening with their coffee at mm-hmm. the end of it in the supply chain. And I don't think enough growers are fully grasping that opportunity to then understand the money they actually need to be making to have a sustainable business mm. because they're still working within a, within a system that's, that's, that's dictated to them. This is the price for your coffee versus being trained as a business person, being mm. educated as a business person. No, I need to understand the cost of, of my product, my costs of doing business. So that I can dictate my pricing, not that this other entity dictates my pricing. So there does seem to be this. And you've talked about this before. So many growers don't know what the cost of production Mm. is for their individual farm. Mm. There isn't financial education. And and either they're not seeking it out or it's not available or it's inaccessible. And. And I think that's a big thing that needs to shift is like we need to, growers need to have more financial education, whether they're seeking it out more or that it's just more readily available to them so that they can re-attain that power or actually attain that power for the first time Mm. of like, no, no, I know this is what I need to charge because I am a business owner and I understand that this is the price I need to pay and I can't negotiate on. And that I think it needs to start there. We're not paying more because, because growers are, are ready and willing to take that request for a discount because it's out of fear too of like, well, if I don't make this sale, Where's my coffee going to go? What if I'm stuck with all of these bags of coffee without a buyer because this person's been buying my coffee for five years and I want to do them this favor, even though I'm shooting myself in the foot. And there's a lot of manipulation and fuckery that happens when those conversations are being happening, right? Like we'll we'll make it up when we purchase the whole crop next year. We're just going through a really difficult time right now as a business. Yes. We promise we'll support you next year. Yes. Yeah. And this is why I say that, like, first and foremost, it is the colonial structure that this whole Mm. industry has been built on because it is all about manipulation Mm. is what those, those found, that foundation is and extracting things. Um, Mm. And I want, I just want to see more growers confident in dictating their pricing and being able to choose their customers and knowing that they're going to make the money they need to. They're going to cover their costs 
and maybe even like make some profit on top of that. Um, and at the other steps of the supply chain, we've got to stop again, like this example of this market that was like, your coffee's too expensive. Can you give us a better deal? We have to have more people saying no to that. Mm -hmm. We've got to stop devaluing our products. Mm -hmm. We have got to just be strong in saying, no, this is the product I'm offering you. I'm not willing to negotiate on quality and buy a cheaper product to, to be blend in here or put in here in, in lieu of this higher quality product so I can give you a better price that I can just get on your shelf or in the hoppers of your grinder. Mm. It doesn't it doesn't do the industry any, any good. And this is something that you've been talking about for years. It is short-term gains mm. without a long-term plan. And it it ends up hurting everybody involved in that deal in the long run. So wise. So wise what you've just said. Because at the end of the day, when somebody comes to you and says, I need that coffee for cheaper, you're doing so many dysfunctional things if you entertain that conversation. The harshest thing that you are doing is you are delaying. Oh, no, let me say that better. You are enabling further dysfunctional behavior in this industry and delaying the death of a business that should have died a long time ago. Mm -hmm. If somebody has the audacity to come to you and say, I can't afford this coffee. I need you to give it to me for a cheaper price. Immediately, the first thought that you should be having is, or the first question you should be asking is, is this a short-term challenge that you're going through or is this systemic mm -hmm. in your business? Mm -hmm. And you should be taking notes of how many times this person comes. And if they're in trouble as a business, I think it's important that we all help each other out but if it is becoming clear that a business is not going to survive, don't make their problem your problem. Yeah. They either need to yeah. go and find an investor or they need to figure out how to fail with dignity. For and sure. there's no shame in closing a business. None at all. In fact, right now, I think what would be really wonderful is if more people who should be closing their businesses close their fucking businesses we would desaturate this industry much quicker and in a more dignified way. Mm -hmm. And if you're somebody yeah. listening to this and you are wondering, how do I get out of this business? Listen carefully. Call me. I will give you free consulting to teach you how to do this with dignity. Send us a DM on social media and I promise you, I will give this service for free to anyone who wants it. How to close your business with dignity. I've done it for many people and this is something I will happily offer as a free service to anyone who needs it. Send me a DM because we need to help people do it N now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Again, it's just like race to the bottom scenario, too, in so many, so many cases. And I just had a flashback. I was like, the, the moment I realized that the, the wealthiest people in the world who are vacationing at the nicest resorts are drinking the cheapest coffee. Yeah. Are we enabled. Wild. Yeah. What? And, you know, I talking about big brands, I recently heard of a massive hotel brand. Hotels don't own their own supply chain, right? They, they mm -hmm. purchase off um, particularly the F&B sector uh, of, of the hotel side of things. You know, they, they bring in produce from other places. They don't really own their supply chains. I heard of a multinational brand, hotel brand, that is looking at buying coffee farms. Yes. They are scouting the world for coffee farms. That's how much they need to secure their supply chain. 
True. And if we're not careful, they're going to do it. And then the next hotel chain is going to do it. And then the next hotel, hotel chain is going to yeah. do it. And we're not going to have what that means, folks, is that not only will there not be any smallholder farms that can be processing really good coffee, there's no cafes that can buy coffee yeah. off those smallholders. You won't have a supply chain. Yeah. Anyway. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about the health of the stakeholders in the supply chain. And before I do that, I, I know that the series on the podcast that have happened this year have been kind of intense. I'm aware of that. Yeah. But I will tell you that the reason I am okay keeping them at this level is we are receiving feedback like never before of how grateful people are that these conversations are being had in a public forum. And Madeline, I know what it takes and what it costs for somebody like you to come on a platform like this and have this conversation with me publicly the same way as we have the, public, the conversation privately. Mm -hmm. Whether it's people that, that have opinions about what you've said on the podcast in person and to your face, or it's in when they do business with you, this may impact you and yet you are still coming on here and saying, but no, this needs to be said because we're in yeah. a, a point of crisis in our industry and I don't know if there's time enough left to fix it. Yeah. So I, I really take my hat off to you and the people who have come on the podcast, particularly this year, and had these conversations because it's not easy. And, and those people who are running expos and running competitions and selling you machines, folks, those people hate that we're doing this. They think yeah. it's cute that we're having these conversations. They will be the ones that will tell you when you're in conversation with, you, with them no, 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 it, it's, not, it's not what they're saying. It's it, like that's not really how bad it is. And my response to you is if you choose to believe them, you deserve what ends up happening next. Yeah. If you don't start paying for coffee, if you continue to make silly decisions where you're buying equipment that's not worth it, disclaimer, Madeline's in Mexico City. The horn in the background was Sorry. just that. That's okay. <laughs> in that very poignant moment where I was saying it. Like, yeah. <laughs> your, the consequences of your actions are for you to deal with. And sit with mm -hmm. that the next time somebody who's going to make money off your decision is giving you advice. We don't make any money off this podcast deliberately. We can't influence you and we get nothing from you being influenced in any way, shape or form. That is so that we can maintain the integrity of this platform. And in the future, mm -hmm. we are going to have a couple of sponsors that are on this podcast. Please know that we're not making money off those relationships. They're collaborative relationships and we're calling them sponsors on the podcast. But we don't make money off this platform so that you can know that we are never going to win from you making a decision one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And that aligns with our brand value of integrity. But is that happening with the other way that some people are trying to impact you? And that's a decision for you to make. So let's go into the next episode. Join us for that where we're going to be talking about the health of stakeholders in the supply chain. Peace of and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. Please don't forget to show us some love by subscribing, liking, commenting, and most of all, sharing this podcast with your friends. Check the show notes for links, including our sponsors and our Patreon. And stay tuned for more great conversations on the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward.